What does that even mean, Bowers Game Cardinar? Boy there, YouTube, I'm back again today for another game review. And today we're excited to check out Heavy Steam from Greenbrier Games. This is for two to four players, age is 14 plus, so it'll take you about 90 minutes to play. And in Heavy Steam, uh, this is a steampunk game where World War II or World War I happened differently, and instead everybody is fighting in giant super mechs. You're going to be having to allocate steam all throughout your mech, but it's going to be a delicate balancing act as you try to keep steam in your legs and in your shield and in your head so you can buy oh so delicious cards but at the same time also keep your weapons powered up so you can blew, 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 shoot your opponents uh it's a miniatures game it, it can be a cooperative game with two people or a team versus team game i should say but i do want to mention this middle part is going to be extremely long because there's a lot going on in this game so if you just want to get my impressions skip over to the end so let's open up heavy steam and see what it's all about Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Heavy Steam. So before we get started, I do want to mention there is a lot, a lot going on in this game. I'm not going to be able to cover everything or else this will be like a 30 minute video. But I'm going to try and give you the basics, show you the components, and show you uh, how a gameplay turn works because it's going over the six phases of the game. So first and foremost, we have a handy dandy rule booklet. It is 31 pages, double sided, full color. Uh, full of pictures, illustrations, examples, an index. I mean, it is a very, very well done rule booklet considering how difficult it is to get into this game. I mean, you are going to need to go through this. When you're first playing the game, you're going to need to go back and forth through the different phases. But, all things considered, it's a very, very well done rule booklet. This rule booklet could have completely killed the game if it was bad, and it does not. So, big thumbs up on the rule booklet. Um, so, whoa, there's a lot going on here. And I do want to give a shout out before we start to the box insert. The box insert is very, very nice. It will hold everything very well, very well done box insert. And everything about this game shows that it was really a, a passion project here. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the components in the game, and then we'll get into the six main phases of the game. So first we'll get to the stars of the show, which are obvious, obviously going to be your uh, your mechs, which are really, really cool looking. You can remove your arms, and you can buy like an expansion thing, so you can actually have the appropriate arms on them. But you're going to have big mechs, and then you're going to have your small mechs. Both of them look really cool. A couple other components you're going to have in the game, miniatures-wise, you're going to have infantry units who will be on the ground helping you out, and you're also going to have uh, these, uh, I believe they're called mechanical cannons. They look like Daleks to me, or like uh, stuff from Star Wars. But they are very, very helpful. They will, uh, they will ding and dent your opponents and force them to use their weapons when they really don't want to use their weapons, but I'll get more into that later. So next you're going to have your board here. This is where you are going to be fighting it out. Uh, as you can see, there's two starting sectors, but there are five different scenarios in this game with different win objectives, different goals, uh, and you might have different starting locations also based on how many players you are going to play. Uh, so you've got your starting sectors right here. This is really just to determine how far you're away from people. Over here you're going to have your little buy sheet because there is going to be a phase where you're going to be purchasing cards that will either help you out, change the terrain you're on, give you some of the infantry and mechanized units that will help you attack. Lots of different cool stuff. Uh, also you're going to have these spots down here because you're going to be able to play cards that will alter the kind of terrain you are on. Uh, which will give you uh, different kinds of advantages. Let's see if I can come up with a terrain card right here. Yeah, so uh, for instance, you might be on a fog terrain, even though uh, no one else around you is, because you purchased the card. Last but not least on the board, the only last thing I want to talk about right here are the hit locations, uh, because what's going to happen is you're not necessarily going to be hitting people where you want to hit them. You're going to be rolling two dice, and that's going to impact where you're going to be hitting the other person's mech when you do deal damage to them. So, speaking of mechs, let's get to your hub, your player card. Uh, well, yeah, we'll get to that next. So, next you're going to get these battle cards right here, which are going to be laid out. You're going to start the game with some of these, and these will have various different abilities. So, for instance, this one is a terrain that when you move, you can lay down a terrain in your terrain spot right there. And that's going to give you uh, one, attack, one, of the, one red dice when you're attacking, so that's really, really nice. Uh, this one is an event, and that's another thing that's interesting about this game. You're going to have random events that are going to be shuffled into the deck and that everyone is going to have to deal with. So this one, roll a random sector, make a four attack, roll for every combatant in a sector of hit, suffer damage three. 
So uh, this one is going to just randomly impact and, and hurt somebody. You got this one, your battle roll. This is another event. Deal one battle card to every player. So this one is just going to give you a battle card. We're just going to shake things up. Uh, these are ones, yeah, the mobile cannon support, which as I mentioned to these guys right here. You'll be able to buy these uh, if they come out, but they're going to cost you two and potentially even more, but I'll get more into that later. Uh, you got terrain, terrain, uh, what's this, for honor and glory, I believe this is, no, do you choose one enemy to steal equal size or larger, uh, choose one enemy of equal size or larger, then your steam titan, both steam titans get plus one attack and may attack each other, uh, discard after combat phase. So lots of stuff that's going to be going on in there that will shake up the game, but we'll get more into how all that stuff works later. Next, you are going to be having some weapons that you're going to be able to attach to your mech. Uh, there will actually be a phase at the beginning of the game where you're going to decide exactly how you want the layout of your mech to work. And this is a secret thing, so you won't know what other people are going to do. Some are better for close combat, like this lightning fist right here. Uh, whereas some are, you know, this one goes up to a range of four. So I'll break down what exactly is going on in the card right here. Uh, the attack cost is how much steam it's going to cost to use it, which we'll talk about steam in a little bit. This is, uh, then it is an arm attachment, and it's going to cost you three to place it, because you're only going to have a set number of points, then you can set up your mech. You can't just pick the three most powerful ones. Uh, it's a close combat one, that's the range, which means you have to be on the same square as someone. And also, it's going to be doing, uh, you're going to be rolling three dice or potentially five, and it's going to be doing eight damage when you deal damage, which is a lot of damage. So, how does fighting work? Well, you're going to be rolling some red and some blue dice. The red dice are going to be attack dice. And this is a pretty standard fare here, depending on how far your distance is, how much, uh, how much your weapon is going to do. Uh, it will be doing various different uh, points of damage. Oh, these are all body modifications, which I want to skip past. All right, so for instance, if I was four spaces away, and uh, I was roll if I was looking for that, I would do four damage. So, uh, depending on how far away you are and your weapon, that's how much damage you're going to be doing. So, needless to say, this is a regular hit, and then this is a critical hit, and likewise, this is a defense, and then this guy is a critical defense. And it works pretty self-explanatory. If you have one critical defense, it will block one critical hit, vice versa. So, for instance, in this, this small battle, this would be a regular hit versus a critical defense, and the defense would win. Uh, pretty simple. So, moving onward, what else do we got? We got over our battle cards, we went over our weapons. This is going to be your initiative marker right here, and uh, your initiative will be switching throughout the game based on how many, how many cubes, how much steam you have in your head, because that's kind of where your brain hub is. And uh, there's not really too much of an advantage to going first, except for the big one is that you get to relocate some of your steam from one location to another. So that can be very, very nice, and we'll get more into how the steam works in a little bit. Uh, so one more kind of, uh, so we got some more tiles which will, will come onto the board every once in a while. You got fog tiles and your zeppelin tiles which you'll put on based, uh, based on the scenario and based on when you get different cards and various different things. And then last but not least, let's get to the star of the show which is your big board. This is what you're going to be using a lot. Uh, this is one of those games where you really don't want to bump the table because you're going to have tons and tons and tons of cubes, which I will move the camera, which I don't like to do normally, uh, right over there. You're going to get red cubes, blue cubes, white cubes, and black cubes. And we'll talk about those in a second. So these are double-sided. Each player is going to get one. And uh, so this will be your smaller mech right here, which, as you can see, is going to have uh, less, uh, less little squares on it. And we'll get to the squares in a minute. And this one over here is going to be your larger mech. So we'll take a look at your larger mech, and we'll go over how everything is going to work here. So first and foremost, you're going to have a pilot spot down here. And each player at the beginning of the game is going to get a pilot card. Now, your pilot cards are going to have a special ability that they can always use. In addition, they are also going to have a once-per-game special ability, uh, which, you know, you, you always be like, should I blow that early? Should I blow that late? Uh, and all of the, pi uh, the pilots that we've used, I think we've used about six or seven of them now, feel pretty well-balanced, and all their special abilities are pretty cool. It definitely does give it a little bit of an asymmetrical feel, in addition to the weapons being a little bit different, <coughs> which can be pretty cool. So, let's go over the different spots on the card real quick. Uh, the first main one here is going to be your weapons. You're going to have a left-handed weapon, a right-handed weapon, and you're going to be playing the cards actually on top of there, so that uh, you just bloop, play it right there, and now you know that you have 
that weapon. You're also going to have what's called a uh, torso, uh, an arm attachment right here, which will sometimes it will do damage or sometimes it will potentially, you know, reflect damage or help you with your shields, help you repair, do all sorts of various different stuff. So let's go over the cubes real quick and we'll show you how that works. So the main kind of cubes you're going to get are going to be these white cubes. These are steam. Steam is going to power everything in your mech, absolutely everything. And you're going to start off with a certain number of it up here in your power reserve. And how this is going to work, and I'm going to try and explain this as best as I can, is that your cubes are going to go from here down to here. And then this is going to be your main hub where you are going to send your cubes throughout your body. But the catch is, as much as you would like to send your steam everywhere, you can't do that. So it gives you these, these kind of decisions that you want to make. Like, do you want to send more cubes down to your legs so you can be more mobile and you can move? Or do you want to send more cubes up to your head right here? Because your head is where you're going to be purchasing those cards and those cards can really help you out. Or do you want to make sure that you've got all your shields locked up? Which brings me to these blue cubes. Because you're going to have these blue cubes on here, which will be your shields. But in order to activate those shields, you're going to be having to place steam cubes into the shield spots or into these spots, which will then give you an extra shield so you're gonna have like extra defense there uh, or do you want to send it to your weapons because you want to do damage for instance if you have a long-range weapon which I believe there's one that goes up to six maybe uh, if I'm recalling correctly then you definitely want to get your steam down there before your type your your opponents mech can even get close to you so you can start doing damage to them uh, but you're gonna have only eight cubes coming through here so you're gonna have to decide where am I sending these cubes outward so you're not gonna be able to do everything you want to do. Also, uh, so as I mentioned, you're going to be having to put steam cubes into various different spots. Once you use those steam cubes, so let's say you have steam cubes down here on your mobility and you decide to move, which as you can see, you're going to use four steam cubes to move, and if you want to move two, you're going to have to have six steam cubes, which is going to be really difficult to do, and you're probably going to have to overburn. Uh, but you're going to immediately take those steam cubes and put them up here, which is going to be uh, your boiler pressure. And you have to be monitoring your boiler pressure at all times, because this is going to impact how many of those blue dice you roll. As we mentioned, the blue dice are defense dice. So you're going to be having this constant juggling act of where do I send my stuff? What do I want to do? Because, you know, I don't want to overload my thing in case, you know, in case I get into combat and I don't want to be rolling two blue dice as opposed to four blue dice, but at the same time, you want to be able to move, you want to be able to fire your weapons, you want to be able to repair yourself. There's also a nice little steam vent up here, which will let you get rid of some stuff here. If you have extra cubes, just a hint, you're never going to have extra cubes. It's a very delicate balancing act. But the main thing is, you want to make sure you also have them up here because you're going to be able to purchase things. But I'm getting in my head of myself, we're almost at 11 minutes now, so let's go over the game. Phase. The first game phase is that you're going to move if you have the ability to move. And if you have the ability to move, you're going to take your white cubes from down here and put them up here, and then you'll be able to move various different spots. And also your infantry and your mechs will be able to move as well, or your infantry and your, uh, your, your little cannon guy, which I can never remember the name of. Also at this point, uh, if you have a terrain card, a terrain battle card, you can play down your terrain battle card in front of you, which will give you an advantage. So for instance, you could lay down your terrain fog. So that's the movement phase, pretty self-explanatory, you're going to be moving. Next is the combat phase, once again, very pretty self-explanatory. If you have your weapon charged up, which means if you have enough white cubes over here, and also you have, uh, you are within range of your opponent, you can try and attack that opponent, and you'll be rolling a certain number of dice based on your distance and your weapon. And once you do that, you're once again going to have to move all that steam over here to your boiler pressure, which means if they attack you, they're, you're going to be uh, you're going to be rolling less dice, which is where the initiative kind of comes into play. You don't want to be the first one to attack if they're going to counter back at you, because then you might be rolling less defense dice. <clears throat> so, uh, whatever the white cubes and whatever the blue cubes. Red cubes we're not going to touch on too much, but needless to say, normally you always have to keep moving your steam. So your steam is going to be continuing to cycle through your thing. If you don't want to move your steam, you'll be able to put on red cubes there, which is good for the short term, uh, but it's also bad for the short term, because eventually once you use those, those are going to go over here, and that's bad news. Uh, so 
sorry if I'm not explaining this as well as I can. There's a lot going on. Last kind of cubes you have are these black cubes. And the black cubes are going to be damage markers. So when you take damage, these are going to be shuffling into your stuff. And this is very, very bad. Because these are going to stay here until you repair them. Which means you're going to have to put more steam into your repair station down there. And it costs three cubes to remove one damage cubes at the end of the steam phase. So if someone does, like, say, three or four damage to you, it's going to take you a while to heal that. And all the while, this black cube is just going to be there like a plague. Now, you may notice there's some spots with numbers on there. If you ever get a black cube on these spots, this is very, very bad. That means you're going to have to roll a dice, and if you don't roll higher than that number, then you are essentially going to lose the game. So that's very, very bad. So once you get those black cubes, you want to make sure you get rid of them. Luckily, you get to place the black cubes where you want them to go most of the time. So that's, uh, that's good. So we have our move, we have our combat, we have our steam allocation. This is when your steam is going to be circulating all through your body, and you're going to have to making those difficult decisions. Do I want my steam in my legs so I can have more mobility? Do I want my steam in my head so I can purchase cards? Do I want my steam on my weapons so I can fire my weapons at a moment's notice? That's all going to be up to you and up to how do you decide to play. So next we're going to have battle card acquisition. We'll go over that real quick. Uh, that's where there's so there going to be four battle cards out here and these are going to be things that you can purchase. Now they have a sliding fee mechanism which I really do enjoy and I'll talk more about that in the pros and the cons. Where if a card is right here it's going to cost you the base value value up top. So this would cost only two right here. Whereas if it's right here, it's going to cost you plus one, plus two, plus three. And that symbol is steam. Now you're going to be spending the money that is in your head. So you have to decide, uh, do I want to put more steam in my head? Uh, I normally always go for that because the cards really spice up the game, and especially the infantries and uh, the, uh, the little mobilized cannon units. Those can really help you out a lot, ding and dent your opponents, force your opponents to use that steam that they don't want to use, but you might end up having to spend a little bit more for it. Also, another unique thing about this game is uh, you're going to have four cards out here, and if no one decides to buy a card during this phase, then this card goes away, boop, everything slides down, and you have a new card down there at the plus four. Uh, so then you're going to determine initiative, which will be going by how much is in your head, and if you're tied, or how much steam is in your head, and if you're tied, then uh, you will just flip the thing over, and uh, the person that was not... Uh, the, who did not have initiative last will go first. Last but not least, you're going to have press release where you're going to check your overload. Things are going to go from here to there because you can only send five from here to here. So, for instance, if you have seven over here, you'll only be rolling three dice, and then only five are going to go. So you're still going to have a couple of steam cubes up there, which is going to be a little bit of boiler pressure left. Uh, and then you are going to go back to the move face, and you're going to do this over and over again. It sounds like it's really daunting, and when you're first learning the game, it is really daunting, but I want to assure you it's not nearly as complex as this 16 minutes has made it sound. But that, in a crazy jump in nutshell, is how you play Heavy Steam. Alrighty then, Heavy Steam from Greenbrier Games. What am I finding? Well, let's go with the pros, let's go with the cons. First, on the con side, it's only two to four players. If you got a larger gaming group, it might not be for you. Also, this is one of those games where if you're playing a three-player game, it's not just like a free-for-all. It's going to be one of those ones where two people are on the same team and one person is not on the same team, which is going to be a turn-off to some people. Some people just like to have that absolute control, and in a three-player game, at least two people are going to have to give up half of their control. Uh, the next kind I have of this one, it is a lengthier game. It says 90 minutes. When you're first learning this game, it's going to be more like two to two and a half hours, especially if you're reading the rule booklet while you're playing. Because the rule booklet, moving on to another con, is a beast to get through. There is a lot going on in this rule booklet, and you're going to be constantly having to be flipping back and forth and back and forth, especially when you're going through all the different game phases, until you learn what is going on. It's by no means a complex game if you're a regular gamer, if you play a lot of games, but when you're first learning the game, it's going to be a lot. That being said, the rule booklet is very well done, as I mentioned in the middle part, which which is you know a saving grace for this game, because it was a bad rule booklet, this game would be dead. Uh, moving on to some other cons. Uh, this is one of those ones where you have to be very careful with your board. This is your board. It's, it's, it's nice paper, but it is still paper, and you're going to have tons and tons and tons of cubes on this. So if you bump this, you're going to be like, oh god, oh god, oh god. Uh, so that's never good. Uh, any more cons I have? I'm trying to think, trying to think. Um, oh, luck base. There is quite a bit of luck in this game. What you roll, what cards come up when some different people have initiative. Uh, this is dice based combat, which is going to be a turn off to some people. The combat is by no means deterministic. You know, I mean, you, there's some things you can do to hedge your bets, like you can have special terrain and this and that, 
But at the same time, if you roll bad, you roll bad. It's just going to happen, which is going to be a turn off to some people. Enough of the cons, let's get to the pros. I was nervous about this game. I tried reading the rule book, but I sat there playing 30 minutes reading it, and I was like, wow, this seems like it's going to be a lot. And then we started to play, and a turn went by, and I was like, hey, this is pretty easy. Then another turn went by. Hey, this is pretty easy. Then by the third or fourth turn, like, I really don't need the rule booklet too much, except for, like, minor rules choice, minor rule questions here or there. Let me assure you, it sounds complex, but it's actually pretty simple. You move, you fight, you move your steam around, which, by the way, I'll get to next, is one of my favorite aspects of this game. You buy battle cards, which is another thing I really enjoy. You determine who's got the initiative. You, uh, you take your pressure out of your boiler pressure and then do your thing, and then you do it once again. You just rinse, wash, and repeat over and over again. And I just like everything in this game. It is a lot of fun. This is a very tactical game. And part of the reason why it's so tactical is because of that steam allocation. When you think of a lot of mech games, you're thinking a fast pace, fight, punch, shoot, boom, let's do this. No, not in this game. This is a very slow, methodical game. You have to really plan out where you want your steam to go. Because, you know, if some, if you're not putting up steam into your shields and someone just happens to hit that right sweet spot, you've got a problem. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you're putting steam in your head so you can buy those awesome cards. I love having that infantry down there. I really like the inclusion of the infantry and those little mechanized cannons into the game because if they don't take them out, you're going to be like, pew, pew, pew. You're going to be doing little dinks and dunks and dents into them. And they're going to be starting to get these little black cubes. And their shields are going to start going down, which means they're going to allocate more into their shields than they'd like to be doing or run the risk of not doing that. Or they can choose to just blue, 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 take those guys out. But at the same time, if they take those guys out, that means they're going to be using their precious, precious steam to take them out, which means they're not going to be attacking you, which is also really good. Not to mention they're going to be putting that steam back into their boiler, which means they're going to be rolling less defense dice. So if your infantry, you know, they destroy your infantry and you're within range, you can now attack them. And they're going to be rolling less defense dice because they already used... Uh, because they have the things in their boiler pressure. This is a fun game. I really enjoy this game, but it's not going to be for everybody. It's really not. Like I mentioned, it's a slow, methodical game. It is not deterministic combat. You're going to want to get in there. And I, I played this with somebody who was just like, yeah, let's fight. I want to get these awesome minis out there. And he, he had focalized, he had focused his weapons on just punching me getting in and just fighting but the same thing is it's really hard to get in close especially early on in the game because you start so far away which just meant he was just like oh i can't attack oh i can't attack and he was focusing all of his steam to his legs but at the same time he wasn't focusing steam to his head because so he couldn't buy these cards that might even help him out and it got frustrating for him this is definitely a try before you buy game in my opinion but for me personally i really enjoyed heavy steam uh, it's going to have a shot on my shelf. Uh, I, it doesn't play like any other game, and that's what I like. I, I was, thought I was going to be against the slow combat, but I really did like the slow combat. I like the pilot's special abilities. I like how the steam works. I like how you get the black cubes and you can get the red cubes, but at the same time it's going to hurt your boiler. I like an awful lot in this game. Heavy Steam from Greenbrier Games. My final thoughts. It is a beast when you're first learning it, but once you know what you're doing, this is a lot of fun. So, it looks like it might be for you. Be sure to check it out. It's from Greenbrier Games. That is Heavy Steam. In the comments below, let me know what is your favorite slow, methodical game. A game with a slow pace that just builds up and builds up, but then once you guys start getting close, it's like boom, boom, boom. Lots of stuff going on. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, I can't really think of any off the top of my head. I do like it in video culture where you're slowly but surely building up your winery and then it's just, you know what? No, I, I think I like it better in Dominion where it starts off really nice and slow and, and slow paced and you're just buying cards and buying cards and then someone's like, uh, action, action, attack, taunt, do this, do this, do this and you finally start getting that machine chugging and you're like, yeah, my machine's finally built and then the game ends in like five minutes later. Uh, I like those kind of games, but let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite slow paced game that eventually builds up to just a brah? That, I don't know if that was English or not. And as always, if you enjoyed this content, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below, and thanks for your time, YouTube. That was a review for Heavy Steam. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner.